Oh my goodness, you guys. This is the last week of the Every Bit Counts Challenge here on Open Hand Farm. My name is Penny and I have been working so hard this month to preserve as much food as I could. Now, Jessica's challenge does not say you need to do as much as you can. It says every little bit counts, but I take it as a challenge for me to take one month out of my life and just preserve things. Of course, there's also garden care. There's harvesting from the garden. There are other things in life that take my time. But I try my hardest each day to preserve as much as I can. Let me show you what I have preserved the last seven days of the 2024 Every Bit Counts Challenge. So on Sunday, day 25, I dried herbs. We had a very busy day. We had a meal that we provided at church. And so I just decided to go ahead and cut some herbs and dehydrate them. So we have mint and oregano, some parsley, and some sweet sage as well as some blue spice basil. And I have seeds for that as well that is going to be going out to some of my followers. I also went ahead and picked our three Bartlett pears that had been growing all season and they are just beautiful. And I also found several figs and I know that they will just need to go in the freezer. So this is what the herbs looked like after they dehydrated. It wasn't a lot, but I actually used several of them this week. So on Monday, I was going through my tomatoes and I had some that were not looking too great. I had been holding off to get enough tomatoes to process some salsa, but had not reached the weight of tomatoes I needed yet. So I went ahead and sliced them up and dehydrated them so that I could make a tomato powder out of them. I also picked the raspberries. Unfortunately, many of them were so soft that they just smushed in my hands. The heat has been so bad, but I was able to get a cup and I just added that to a bag I already had in the freezer. And today was the 26th, the first day that the fermented tomatoes would be ready to try. So I decided to try them. When I took the lid off, they smelled amazing. So I went ahead and grabbed one and tasted it and I loved them. They were delicious. So I put them in the fridge to stop the fermentation process. Then I also laid out some raspberries that I had put away last fall. I just shoved them in a bag and put them in the freezer and labeled them raspberries for jam. So Tuesday would be working with peppers, raspberry jam, and sourdough crackers. Before I could do the peppers, which I was going to dehydrate, I had to empty the dehydrator. So I took the tomatoes out and I put them in a little food processor and turned them into a powder and put them in a jar for storage. Then I cut up a bunch of poblano peppers. Once I got all of them cut up, I just laid them out on the trays. And once I got one tray done, I went to another and I was able to put them in the dehydrator and preserve them that way. Now on to the jam. I use honey in my jam, so I use Pomona's pectin. You put some calcium water in with the fruit, and then you add the pectin to the honey, and after the fruits come to a boil, you pour in the honey and pectin, and stir it in and let it cook until it is boiling again. I fill them in the sink. That way my raspberry stains stays in one spot and I can clean them up easily. I clean the jars really well because they were sticky on the rim and you don't want that. Put the lids on the rings and got them in the water bath canner. And when they came out, they looked beautiful. 
One of my favorite things to do with sourdough pour off is to make crackers. I got this recipe from Ruth Ann Zimmerman and I do something different though. I triple the recipe to put in one pan. Now my pan is a big like 16 by 21 or something like that. And I put silicone mats down to spread it out on. And then I let it cook for about an hour. And if some of them look more golden around the edges of the pan, I'll just take those off and then put the rest of the pan back in. But this time my goal is to see how well they will store if I suck the air out of them and put them in a food saver bag and leave them on the shelf. So I will let you know how that turns out. Now we're on Wednesday where we have raspberries, figs, and grandkids. Not a lot of time today, so I'm keeping it simple. I took the poblano peppers out of the dehydrator and I picked raspberries. I had a full pint this time. I put them out on my tray to flash freeze them and I think I told you last time that these white spots are fine. They are bleached by the sun because it has been so hot. And then I found some more ripe figs. So I laid those out on a tray and froze them as well. I put some beans in to soak to try making my chipotle black beans again. And I got a new bag of beans that I have in the bowl as well as a pound in a jar and a pound of the old beans. I wanted to make sure that the beans weren't defective that I had used since they did not swell up as much as I expected. Okay, it's Thursday and we're doing black beans and tomatoes. The black beans have absorbed the water and are filling the jar very nicely. So I know that the beans themselves were not defective. So I boiled them for 30 minutes like I was supposed to per the recipe. And while they were boiling, I'm going to chop up some tomatoes to make bruschetta in a jar, which is so good. I will pour it over either a soft mozzarella ball or cream cheese, and then people dip crackers in it, and it's so delicious. I'm using my new chopper, which is such a time saver. I try to use different colors of tomatoes because it looks really pretty when it has the different colors in the jars. Then I go back to my beans, I get the jars filled up and add the hot water and I get them in the canner. Then I'm going to make the brine that goes on the bruschetta and it's water along with some white wine and white wine vinegar the garlic cloves that I had minced, some basil, and some dried oregano, then balsamic vinegar is added, as well as a little bit of sugar. This stuff is so good, you guys. I filled my hot jars with the tomatoes and then started pouring the brine over them and made sure to clean up the edges of the jar because this too is sticky. Put on the lids, rings, and put them in a water bath canner. Look how pretty they look with the herbs and the different color of tomatoes. I had that other jar of black beans that were the old beans, so I decided to do the same thing with them. I boiled them for 30 minutes like I did the others, and then I filled them up to the shoulder of the jar. Then I added water. So I left one and a half inch headspace. When I took my black beans out, they again did not fill the jar. So I definitely need to add more beans next time. I also had some items that I bought from Azure that I needed to put into their own containers. So I did that to get ready to put them on the shelf as well. And now it's Friday. So I have oils, salve, and tincture. I'm going to make an oil with my complete bone and tissue mixture 
So I'll just pour what I have left of that in a jar and I will cover it with organic extra virgin olive oil and be sure and label it with the date that it will be done. And I will set that in a dark space, probably back in my creamery. And if I think about it, I will shake it every day to just kind of keep it mixed up. Now I already have a plantain oil jar that needs to have the oil drained off of it. So I'm going to use this little colander as well as some cheesecloth. I will just let the plantain drop into the cheesecloth and kind of squeeze it out the best I can with the spoon. But then I will pick up the cheesecloth and twist it and squeeze it to get all of the oil out of it. I ended up with about a cup and a half of oil and I only need a cup to make my salve recipe. So I poured off half a cup and now I'll pour the rest of it into my jar that I use to make salves in. I'm going to be using an organic white beeswax and I'll have a fourth of a cup of that. I will put it in a pan of water and let the water simmer, not boil, until the wax pellets have melted. And at that point, it's ready to use. Although, I am going to add some tea tree oil to this so I need to let this cool just for a minute. So while it's cooling, we're going to really quickly put together an echinacea tincture because winter is coming and this will be needed. So I'm just taking echinacea root, filling a jar about half full, then I'm going to cover it with 80 proof vodka. And this too will sit in a cool, dark spot and get shaken whenever I think about it for the same amount, six weeks. So after I make it, I label the lid and I tell what kind of vodka I have used. Then the salve mixture is cool enough to add the tea tree oil. And then it can be poured into these one ounce jars. And once they harden up a little bit, I'll put the little white caps on and then the lids. And you always want to label. Don't forget to label. I like to use these paper labels that I ordered with Open Hand Farm on them, but I also like to cover the label with a piece of tape because sometimes you get oily fingers or things spill on them and the tape will protect your ink. And finally, it's Saturday. Today, it's sourdough starter. I have a little over a quart of sourdough starter that I don't need, so I am going to dehydrate it. I'm just going to spread it onto my little plastic tray covers and get it as even as I can, and then put it in the dehydrator and set it on a basically no heat setting and I'm putting it on for 12 hours. It probably won't take that long. And this is a complete look at days 25 through 31. If you have been here for all of my videos during the Everbit Counts Challenge, thank you so much for your support in this. I have loved hearing from viewers about what they are preserving or asking for recipes and I hope that if you try them, you enjoy them as much as we do. Now I want to show you what it looks like to have all of the items that I preserved in the month of August on the table. I have to say though, a few jars here and there have already been used. But for the most part, this is what it looks like.
this does not mean I will stop preserving for the year. I have so many things that I still want to have on my shelf. And we are going to the produce auction in Winter, Missouri on the 10th. So I'm anxious to see what I will get there in order to preserve. I know I want to put some apples up. So that is something that I'm looking forward to. I also have a garden that is still producing. So I will continue to fill jars and get them on a shelf. Of course, right now they're not on a shelf. But if you have followed along my videos, you know that we have shelves ready for all of this food in the larder. I just hope there's going to be enough room. Thanks again for coming along on this adventure with me and for supporting me and being so encouraging. And I pray blessings on you and your family as the year goes by that God will provide what you need and you will have enough to share with others as I plan to do as well. Until next time, blessings on you and yours.